Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Talk Cocky with me. So before the season started, when I was looking at the schedule, we had Arkansas, Georgia, back-to-back. I knew that between one game and the next, it would be very heavy offensive line, defensive line strategy for both. So there was absolutely nobody else I wanted on this episode more than the one and only Mr. Jeffrey Hopkins. How are we doing, sir? Great. How are you doing? That could be better. Here, here in a moment, I'm going to wrap this up and then go play team trivia with my dog. My wife's out of town, so it's just going to be me and my dog playing team trivia. So I feel like I'm going to have to anchor this team tonight. Uh, I feel confident. Feel confident. Uh, um, we just, uh, I just picked up both of ours from the kennel. So one's <laughs> absolutely tired and the other's, well, he's probably going to bark at someone walking to the door in the next 20 minutes so well we we had uh i had two up i had one ups driver pull up rhett screamed at him he left and literally within 30 seconds another truck pulled up and he had to scream at that one too so <clears throat> completely get that one so let's get to football what is the first take on the arkansas game i i, I saturday was a kick in the gut um It was one of those games that we played collectively as bad of a game as I've seen us play in a very long time. Uh, Special teams crumbled. Defense couldn't tackle. uh, Offense showed sparks, but when it mattered, for lack of a better term, fumbled. Um, But if you take, take away as bad as it looked, we still had a chance late in the game. And when I was in high school, one of my baseball coaches, he had this saying that he said after every single game, it pissed me off every single game because we're like, come on, coach, we just won. Can we at least enjoy it for a minute? But he used to say, when you win, you're not as good as you think you are. And when you lose, you're not as bad as you think you are. And <clears throat> as I got older, kind of that keeps popping in my mind. I'm like, okay, you know, it makes sense a little bit. And I feel like for Saturday, that saying is exactly – perfect for that because we come out of that game 21 missed tackles just missed opportunity after missed opportunity but you look at it and again as bad as it was we were late third early fourth quarter driving for a chance to take the lead so is it 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 felt bad the final score looked bad but we were still there we were still competing for the ball game so was the loss as bad as we all feel And I think that's a good thing, too, that we do feel as bad as we do after a game like that. Um, And there's no moral moral victories, but you can see positive things and you can see things that we can build on that maybe we won't have that game again in a few weeks. So what what do you think on that? Yeah, I mean, there's – you're right. There's no moral victories. But like you said, you always want to be in a spot to compete and to win. And – they as bad as they played, you know, the missed tackles, the missed assignments, the fumble, the interceptions, um, you still had a chance, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, you know, we're, I think anyone going into this game is like, this is one of those like, ah, we need to beat Arkansas. But, mm-hmm. and the broadcaster said this that, you know, Arkansas is probably a good year to two years ahead of a rebuild than where South Carolina is. And they're probably right. Um, Mm -hmm. But, yeah, you're right. Like, dang, we were that close. But we made some mistakes and, like, and just just lost it. You know, the absolute horrible attempt at a onside kick to just – Two of them. Two of them. Yeah, and just scoop and – I mean, you're like, you know, what do you do about – what do you do about that? Yeah. You can't miss a tackle because the guy had no one in front of him. So, mm-hmm. um, but just miscues like that, you know, if you want to win in the SEC, you've got to eliminate those type of mistakes. And, you know, I'm sure they, they watch that on Sunday afternoon and you're going to make sure you don't make those again. It's, and that's going to separate going forward and building a winning program versus just being mediocre or, or average is when you, make those adjustments and like, all right, we, we messed it up one time. That's a mistake. We're not going to make again. Yeah. Well, and I think too, 
I think having that game and the feeling around the program this week is actually a little bit of a sign that we are taking a turn around that corner. Um, instead of just going, oh, well, Arkansas was better. We were supposed to lose. We lost. Okay, moving on. You see on Gamecock Twitter, you see in the interviews, everybody has that little nasty taste in their mouth. They're like, we were better than that. Like, if you go up against a team, you go mono, mono, everybody plays good, one team takes it, you tip your hat. If one team's way better than you and they beat the brakes off of you, you tip your hat, you go with it. But when it's a game that you know you should have done better, you did bad and you still almost got there, I think it's left a little bit of a taste in their mouth that we're better than this, we're going to make sure this doesn't happen again. And uh, and that actually kind of leads me to the next point, too, of – Everybody knows that they should have done better, and we have the talent to play a much better game than we did Saturday. One thing you will never get from me on my show or anybody that's a guest of mine, we will never bash a player. We will never bash a coach. We will never bash a recruit or any of that. Um, I think that is the stupidest thing that a grown adult Anybody, this is not directed to anyone, but it's the dumbest thing that a grown adult would ever go after a teenager, early 20 year old man, and say that he sucks. Like, right, right. Th- these guys have more, the worst player on this team has more athletic ability than 99% of the people talking shit online has in their big, like in their entire body. Th- these guys have more ability in their big toe than you have in your entire life if you added it all up like some of these people are just so dumb and it's like give them give them a break it, it's a bad game everybody knows it's a bad game but uh that that's one thing you'll you'll never hear out of this microphone and if it does that'll be the day i'll hang this up because you know what they're going out they have higher aspirations going to the nfl they're not going to go out and suck it up uh because they don't care about you or they want you to live in misery like that, they're trying to get paid, so nobody's yeah. going to do that. Yeah. No one, no one breaks the huddle and says, "Man, I'm gonna go out here. Let me see if I can miss this block. Yeah. I'm, gonna block I'm gonna go block the wrong guy this time." Oh damn, I missed. Well, yeah. oh well. well. Yeah, oh, you know. Oh well, I still got a free education. Nobody, they, you know, they're yeah. thinking about that. You know, they work way, they work way too hard and compete way too hard for twelve months out of the year to just say, "Eh, we know." For, for for some never was on on Twitter to right. say no. oh you suck <laughs> right and you know and, and the other thing for the for the for the never has beens hey look if you want that you know if you want some of that smoke from whatever person you're talking about and you walk up to him hey they eyeball, they walk they walk out of their it, car, yep they walk hey, out of their cars after games at Williams Bryce Stadium wait on them to come out of the locker room and say to them. A- absolutely but you know don't hang out behind your uh your twitter hand- your twitter handle and a couple burners and uh talk trash or, or even a video i mean or whatever but i mean you know you see those dudes up up close you know you've seen them mm-hmm. I, well, I, you know i'm a pretty strong fella i don't want that smoke hey, hey, whatever, no. man. hey knock yourself out hey me and my wife we uh we got down on the field for 2001 a few years ago and i'm six one two hundred not small guy not a huge guy but you know, hair larger than average, I guess you'd say, but they came out and I remember I was standing there and I kind of turned and Jordan Birch and Boogie are both standing there. And I look straight up to this guy with them. I'm like, Holy crap. These are monsters of dudes. Like y- you're not saying anything to those guys. You're you're not going to call no. Jordan Birch a bus to his face. Let me tell you that one. No, yeah, that's, a fact. <laughs> that's a fact, but getting into some of these individual performances, um, uh, you got to start at the top every time, you know, Radler. Uh, I thought he played a really good game. People are going to say stuff about a couple of those deep balls that were missed and then the pick late, but he threw for the most yards that we've seen since Jake Bentley threw for 500 yards at Clemson. He almost hit 400. Uh, to me, even the interception, as bad as it was, it was kind of, it was a situation where you need to force a throw. Right. Uh, so if you throw a pick there, I'm, whatever you're trying to make a play you're trying to come from behind that that kind of happens but he played a really good game and as bad as everybody else played if he would have played a great game and I don't want to put that pressure on him uh, because one guy should not have to win you a ball game 
But if he would have played a great game, we might actually be having a different podcast today, but throws for almost 400 yards. But you look at three deep balls. All three were A-B. One A-B had to catch. At least dive out and attempt. Right. But he got those little alligator arms. Uh, one DB makes a great play. Should have been thrown a little bit more in the post. Maybe. Uh, we don't really know the play call. Maybe it's supposed to go up the seam. Who knows? But DB made a tremendous play even where the ball was thrown. But I, I think if you asked him what one throw he wished he could have back, it would be the scramble play where A.B. broke behind the DBs, wide open touchdown, and he just overthrew it. Right. And somebody made a comment on on Twitter the other day, and I responded. I said, you know, Rattler wasn't the reason we lost, but he was just inches from being the reason we won. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think he was, you know, again, you know, not to go back too far, but, you know, he makes throws in the first game that I don't think anybody else in the roster makes. No, no way. Um, and he makes plays. And, he, and again, I think he had um, – in, in this week, and I think we're, we'll get into it next, but he had a little bit better uh, pass blocking this week. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think he might have been a little uh, a little more happy feet than he probably should have. I think he could have stayed in the pocket just a little bit longer on a couple plays that he didn't need to move, and he did. Um and maybe, you know, some sometimes you just – you're thinking about you're trying to make a play. And you know, think about this guy. He's coming in. He's transferring. He's got a lot of hype behind him. He's trying to make a play. He's trying to make all the hype a reality. Mm-hmm. And and I get it. And I, I, I appreciate that effort from him. Um, but you're right. You know, he went from he, – he was inches away from being the hero. And mm-hmm. – um, I'm glad he's our quarterback. Oh, you know? absolutely. Yeah. I think he's I think he's gonna be and it's only game two. And I guess yeah. fans have been <laughs> yeah. talking fans have been talking so long about this season. It's only game two. And I get that it was a uh, an SEC matchup. I get that. But it's just game two. So mm-hmm. um Yeah, we ha- we have plenty good. of time to yeah. get get kinks worked out and still have a great season. Like we're it, it's not over. We're not going O for 12 now or O for the next 10. I mean, we, we still have a lot there. But, yeah, you'd hit on it on the pass block. And so the O-line, uh, I, I'm actually going to let you go tee off here first. Uh, checking out the O-line, what was your thoughts as far as um, run blocking, pass blocking? I think it was uh, this week I thought the pass blocking was much, much better. The uh, – the run blocking um, is still somewhat of a, a concern. Um, you know, if you look at the last the last two games, you know, we're in rush yardage. We're averaging two yards a carry. Um, that's not going to um, win you a whole lot of games. That's going to put – it's going to make you really, really, really one-dimensional. Mm-hmm. People know that, hey – they can't run the ball, so they've got to throw it. So, you know, they're not going to hand the ball off in the backfield. Maybe hit some swing passes to some running backs. But if they're only averaging two yards a carry, now that figures in uh, rather sacks too. But um, you're not going to have a whole lot of uh, respect from the front seven of most defensive coordinators. So they can kind of plan one way. Um I think the tools are there. And, it, you know, you're also trying to find a rhythm of a play call, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, again, you know, we'll get into later. But um, all the pieces are there for the run game. And they've got to figure and, – and, and quite honestly, I don't know the answer. I wish I did. I'd probably make more money if I knew the answer. <laughs> but whatever it is, got to figure it out. Um, well, let, let me ask you that, too. You said they got the pieces. And we're just two years removed from – almost every one of these guys being the offensive line for the leading rusher in the SEC. Yeah. I mean, th- this is basically every single person that was on that front line or at least saw some pretty significant playing time. Is it play calling? Is it scheme? Or Are people able to adjust to us now? Or what is it that 
as an offensive line, as, as these guys are, what is it that would take them from opening gaping holes one year, have a thousand yard rusher, have the leader in the SEC to the next two years struggle? I think it I think it is a little I think it is a little scheme. Um, you know, with Kevin Harris being that guy, mm-hmm. being a different type of runner than some of the other guys in the in the backfield now. But if you also look, and I noticed this Saturday, when there's a different running back in the in the backfield, it's like plays are called differently for McDowell mm-hmm. than they are for Lloyd. And it seems like they're they're getting more, and I'm not sure if they're changing the, the scheme for each one of them, but or maybe and they're just maybe they're catching the defense right too, um, but they're getting more movement between the tackles on some plays than others, and I know that probably sounds. So um, are, I think I know what you're saying. Are are you saying that they're actually getting better holes for Juju? Uh, yeah, it's so, crazy. Okay, yeah. I, I feel I feel like that. Yeah, and, I, I'm with you. I don't know. I don't know if it's scheme or what, but Juju seems to. And I don't even think Lloyd catches the ball and dances behind the screen. I mean, I think they both get the ball and attack the line. Uh, but it seems like Juju is getting little bigger holes. He's at least getting through the front line. And then, you know, he's got the second level t- to work with where Lloyd looks like he's ha- he's getting the ball. He doesn't even get to the line half the place and he's having a go. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it, it's interesting you said that. I didn't even have that as a note to mention, but. Uh, when you said it, it's even back to last year, there were definite plays that, <clears throat> excuse me, that you could see where it just seemed like it opened up a little bit more with Juju. I'm not saying that they like him better or maybe calls are different or whatever, but I'm curious if he just brings a little extra, hey, I'm coming full speed. Y'all better be ready. So they're like, oh, right, we, we got to be yeah, going. It, you, know, it, you know, you can either um... – Block the right guy because I'm coming to this hole, and if you if you're not in if you're not out of the way, I'm putting my helmet in your back. Yeah, yeah. And that doesn't feel good because it's happened before. Um, so you got to get out of the way. Um, but it, you know, just looking at our rushing stats, Lloyd's only had 18 attempts mm-hmm. in two games, mind you, and McDowell 13. Um, 11 of those and 11 attempts for Jaheim Bell, which, you know, you can say what you want, whatever, that, that kid just, he just wants the ball, however you yeah. get to him. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if we're only in two games, if Lloyd's only touched the ball 18 times in two games. And now, mind you, he's only lost three yards in all in those attempts, but he's, I mean, he's averaging just under three yards a carry. Um, yeah, and, and and we'll hit on play calling here in a second, but I actually really like the way that we came out of the gate uh, Saturday by throwing some screens because we knew they were bringing the heat. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. I mean, I, I thought the play calling at points was perfect for, for what we needed. Execution at times didn't do it. But one of the things, observations that I really kind of had with our O-line, one, I have to say as a caveat, I didn't get his name because I didn't give a crap what his name was. I, I can't say online what I was actually calling him Saturday, but number 42 for, for Arkansas had one of the best defensive halves I've ever seen in my yes. life. Yes. I mean, it didn't matter if he was on the sideline, he was making the tackle. And I'm like, dude, you're not even supposed to be in the game. What are you doing? Stop. I mean, it, we could have three guys sitting there trying to block him and he found a way to get through and, and make a play. And you're like, dude, what is going on? Oh, um, but one thing that I noticed too, and, and yeah, I, I think as the game went, we had much better pass blocking, but it seemed like Arkansas also changed and was only bringing the front three every now and then they'd bring a four with a blitz or whatever, but they were only lining three up and really kind of backing off, which right. I, I, I kind of told everybody that was at the watch party, whether they said, why would you do that? Why would you not bring the house every single play? knowing that we had some kinks in our offensive line blocking and try to exploit that as much as you could. But uh, 
Yeah, I, I noticed kind of as the game went that they were only bringing the three. They were giving Spencer time to to drop back pass. We're, and it could be the it could be the screens that we threw early on. Maybe they decided, hey, we'll bend and not break at this point. And uh, I think they almost broke, but like we said earlier, we had, we missed just enough. Uh, we we kind of hit on the backs receiver wise. I mean, I, you can't ask more for from Juice Wells. I mean, that kid played his butt off, and uh, Jalen Brooks has had tremendous first two games of the, of this season coming back. Uh, we just got to get more production from other guys. They've got to get open. Uh, I know DK has been injured this year. I think they're saying that he, he should see more playing time as time goes. Um, but we, we've got to get more guys getting space. I did like that we got Stog open over the middle for that little dump pass that went for a ton of yards, and then we never called that again. I'm not a huge fan. I love Austin Stogner. I'm not a massive fan of him in the behind the line of scrimmage screen game. I don't think he has the acceleration button on his controller uh, for a behind the scrimmage type type player. Uh, I think uh, that play. I think I think Jaheim Bell makes a touchdown in that play. Yeah, you know. Um, but uh, I forgot which pass it was. Stogner makes an outstanding block. In the well, so, field and well, stands so, his guy up. Yes, yeah, so he actually, and I, I was, I didn't mean to mention him just yet because I was going to give him the Gamecock Eat Snod since I've already gave him that Ate Him Up award. I didn't realize that he had it on Lloyd's touchdown as well, but uh, on Wells's touchdown run, the 63 yard route, he came off and blocked the only guy that could have made a play on Wells. Yeah. <clears throat> so he ate that one up. And then in, um, I think it was in Beamer's press conference, somebody had asked about the block that Stogner made. He said that he also made the downfield block. They got Lloyd into the end zone. So he is the epitome. If you're a kid that's wanting to play football, tied in wide receiver, and you want to find the thing that's going to take you to the next level and get you some playing time, although you might not be the fastest or best, learn how to downfield block. And that's exactly the plays to watch. And if you're that um if you're that kid that's um tall, low lanky, mm-hmm. not a lot of weight on you, um playing offensive line, learn to catch the ball. Um, yeah. you know, tight ends in my years of coaching J V football, we always had a saying that the tight end is always open. Yeah. And in, and in J V football it typically is. And um not saying that the SEC is always open, but a lot of times you kinda lose that guy. Um, and I think we've got some good ones on the um, on the roster, and and I do like and, and and you know we were just talking about Lloyd and and McDowell differently and, and as running backs, but Lloyd's a great receiver out mm-hmm. of the backfield. Mm-hmm. You know, a couple of those passes that he you know that he's caught in in catch and run in open space, he may be as good as there is. Yeah, and I actually I was impressed with his press conference this week that asked him about the fumble. <clears throat> and and that the way that the question was approached was, did you do something wrong on the run, or did did the guy just make a good hit on the ball? And and Marshawn, this explains the level of professionalism that he carries himself at. He starts talking. He goes, "Well, you know, in this situation, I, I talked with my coach, and although typically guy on the right, you switch the ball to the left. I was going in traffic, so." you know, maybe not change hands while it's in traffic. He went, he, he, he did make a good hit on the ball. It's great play by him, but there's no excuse on my part. And I was like, boom, that's it right there. Like right. G- give a nod to the other guy. You made a great play, but you should never best me. That, that should be the mentality, but we'd kind of, you know, we, we've mentioned a little bit already of play calling maybe I'm the dumbest person on earth and should hang up doing football podcasts, but I don't hate it. I mean, do I want it to be perfect? Do I want us to do a hundred or a thousand yards a game? Absolutely. Um, do I wish we would have gone to that tight end over the middle a little bit more? Yeah. Uh, would I like 
to see Bell get targeted in the passing game instead of just handing the ball straight up the gut. Yeah, but plays plays were on the field Saturday for the guys to execute, and if they executed, just the plays that were given. You know, we're not talking make a spectacular play, roll on the ground, catch the ball, whatever. The plays were there that if the ball was thrown a hair shorter, if you reach for the ball a little bit more, everything was there to have made that a completely different ball game. Yeah, I, I was, as I watched the game, I'm like, man, I'm not mad about the play calling Mm-mm. at all. At least it, you, you, you call them, you go out and execute them. And like, you know, there's, there's some that maybe you need to make a little above average play to yeah. make, but they're there. Um, I thought the play call was good. I thought some of those that, you know, the, the pass to starter that I thought, you know, was um, kind of that little screen. I was like, man, eh. didn't like the, what a huge fan of the personnel. Well, and, and that, that was my other thing. I'm curious if something happened and maybe the wrong, the wrong people got put in on that one. Uh, Cause yeah, it, he, it, it just seemed awkward. Stog looked awkward. Like it, it was one yeah. of those, I think everybody was like, uh okay yeah you know, i didn't like it um you know in in the art of play calling and and i'll say that it, it is an art because you know a lot and a lot of people don't understand what goes in to those play calls of you know yes you know and i always hate the, the why are we running up the middle well there's a lot of teams that run up the middle because it happened to us several times which mm-hmm. we'll talk about next but um you know, sometimes you run a play and it may not be successful. It may be just positive yardage, but it sets up another yep. play. Yep. Not not two calls later, but it might be the next quarter or it might be in the yep. second half of oh, hey, they they shifted to this, but are they but they didn't shift to this. So let's run the same play out of a different formation. Well and and, and another thing too that, that you just said too is it may not always be to set up a play for that game either. Well, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We may run out a different formation just for the hell of it. Feel feel comfortable with where we're at in the game again. We we know how Saturday went out, and I'm not saying that any play called Saturday was to get cute to set up a play for a future game, but I, there are times that a coach will call a play if they feel in a good position – that it can be relatively successful in that moment, but they have that play action play off of it, or they've got some other misdirection that they're going to run off of it against a different opponent that they feel like it'll be more of an execute. You know, they're putting stuff on tape for these teams to look at and go, Oh, okay. So they get in this format, they run this play. Okay. That's what we should expect. Right. And again, it's the second game of the season. And don't get me wrong, it would have been fantastic to go on the road and win a game against an SEC West opponent. But I'd much rather get those SEC East wins mm-hmm. than, you know. But I do I do feel like, and in, in, I can't remember if it was on one of the Welcome Homes or something else, Satterfield talked about getting Spencer in a rhythm. Yeah. Now get him in a rhythm. He's a rhythm quarterback. If we get him in a rhythm, um, and I feel like sometimes that right now, you know, just you know, just trying to figure out what's what's working. And I know that people are going to well, they should know, but well, sometimes you don't know. Yeah. You, know? Um, you don't know until you got another team going right. against you. And, you know, when there's another when there's eleven cats on the other side that are. Um, pretty good football players too. Mm-hmm. And you're also calling against, and it's, and it's chess. I mean, you know, sometimes you, you wish you were playing uh, checkers with some of them, but it's, it's a chess match. And I think there's, there's one former player that um, was on Twitter and he says, you know, the other folks are playing chess and we're still playing checkers. And I'm yeah. like, eh, that's probably a, a, a bit much, but, I, I was okay you, with the play calling. I know um, who you're talking about, but yeah. I, yeah, I think it's getting – I think – and also they've got a – as an offensive coordinator and offensive staff, you also – you're trying to get comfortable with some new guys that you're plugging in. Mm-hmm. And what do they do best? And, you know, they're figuring it out. And like I said, you're getting it on film, and 
they're watching that stuff every single day, you know. Um, it would be nice, you know, and I watched um, the new Gamecock Plus. I'm not sure if you've seen that, but oh, I haven't yet. When they're sitting down with coaches, and they haven't done with offensive staff as much. They have only done defense so far. And um, they're in just like film room. They're breaking down some drills and they're breaking down some plays. And oh, it's, nice. It's, it's, it's really awesome to see. And uh, I'll be glad when they do the, the offensive side. But, yeah, that's um, – but, again, go back to play calling. I, I thought it was I, – I, I liked it better in the Arkansas game, and I thought that there were some good things that could have gone our way with just, you know, the ball being a little short, being able to mm-hmm. catch or, you know. Like I said, that, that well, DB made a great play on a ball. You yeah. Know, it, it's going to happen. Your hat. Tip your hat. Yeah, right. But and that was the thing, like, and I don't – probably the wrong week to, to mention this na- name, but even during Muschamp's era, we had some – a lot of people that just roasted OCs and, you know, some rightfully so. But there were times that people were like, oh, the play calling was sucked. And I'm like, well, we did have a wide-open receiver that the quarterback threw it two, uh, two rows into the bleachers to, right? I mean, I don't, I don't care if you've got Steve Spurrier there, if your quarterback can't hit the broad side of a barn, or if when he does hit you, you drop it, because we had a ton of those too. Like, yes. You've yes. got to execute the play. It That's does not matter how good the play call is. If you don't execute, it ain't happening. Now, you could go get the, the 1995 Dallas Cowboys with that offensive line, Emmitt Smith and all them, and say, run up the middle, run up the middle, right. run up the middle, run up the middle. And you know what? They're going to run it straight down the damn field because right. they had talent. So it, it, it's a blend between executing the play, having a good play. But when the play's there and you miss it, that's not the OC's fault. Um, but let, let's flip it over. We, we could harp on that one all day. Let's flip it over to the defense. Uh, looking forward, although that's kind of not where we're at yet in this, this podcast, but um, looking forward, those injuries are going to be very costly, very, very costly. I mean, realistically, I guess we could say it for Saturday too. I mean, we lost a lot of starters, if not lost them for the game and the season, um, lost them enough to where their productivity dropped off. So um, I think Boogie, they're saying should play this weekend or is, is questionable, but, you know, he's not going to be 100%. And when one of your top D linemen is not 100%, and you're needing those guys to jail to help slow the run down and put pressure on the quarterback. That that's a that's a big loss. Uh, yeah. Again, e- e- even if he's ninety percent, if you're going up against a guy that's just as big, maybe bigger or whatever, and he's a hundred percent, you know that that's going to hurt. But <clears throat> for me, we had twenty one missed tackles, and I have not seen an uglier defensive game in years. Um, it, it was just one of those, like Zach Pickens, he missed a tackle. Like he was all over the back, literally on his back and then fell off. Like how does a six, seven, six, eight, 350, pounds, how are you riding piggyback on a guy and fall off? I mean, that was just kind of the breaks that we were having Saturday and nothing was ever Again, when it's across the board, it's not, uh, you know, it, it's just one of those games that it happens. But it wasn't, it wasn't like in the past where you had a DB that was just scared to come up and make a hit. We were there. We were making the hits. Even when we were trying to wrap up or strip a ball, we just missed them. <laughs> we just fell off of them. And you're like, crap, you know, what can we do to stop doing this? If we would have had 15 missed tackles instead of 21, different ball game. If we would have had, you know, two or three of those third down uh, plays yeah. where we hit them on the line, and if we push them back instead of they fall forward, it's a different ball game. But that that's one of those that, again, kind of collectively, the whole defense just had a bad game. I don't – Going back to the when you lose, you're not as bad as you think you are. I don't think those guys are that bad. It was just when it rains, it pours. 
and the first guy missed just enough, then the next guy missed just enough, and then Arkansas got some momentum, and it was there. But uh, Nicky, he's going to be a monster at oh, safety. Yeah. He, he, he's going to be a monster. He's going to be the next DJ Swearinger, if not better. Uh, no offense, Swag. But, uh, right. I mean, I, I don't know if you can really get better at – have a better college career than, than swag did, but, um, but he, he's going to be an absolute monster at safety for years to come. And it's going to be fun to watch, but um, well, and even, even one of those, um, you know, freshmen, you know, and, and really not even, I think I read somewhere that South Carolina was the only power five offer. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Where, where were the, where are the only ones? You know, they, they, one of the few passes they threw for a touchdown, eh, he just kind of got lost, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. And it, I'm it was, not even mad at that. No, and and, and that was just not – I mean, we're, so we're, you know, because of injury, we're playing a, a, a freshman that, again, is going to be very good. I'm glad he's on our team. Um, but, you know, you're going back to your missed tackles. It's like they missed them all in the same dang play. Ah. You know, Um they were four. I think in first half they were four of seven on third down conversions. Um, you know you, that that has a lot to do with it too because they're on the field. You know, and they're yeah. getting more. And, and give Arkansas credit. I mean, those cats ran hard. Um, their quarterback is a grown man. You know, I mean, they might have listed him at two forty two, but he might be a biscuit over two fifty. And yeah, you know he brings a load when he runs and he's a big cat. Um, but, you know, like you said, you know, Piggins was on a guy and he just kind of slides off. And then you think the next guy, you don't need, never want to assume a tackle, but sometimes you just, you're out of position a little bit. And if you're out of position a little bit on a top running back in the SEC, you're out of position a lot. Oh yeah. <laughs> and there's, there's nothing much you can do to separate. And, um, I think a lot of those missed tackles I feel like they came on just a handful of plays, but you never know which play is going to be the big play. Mm-hmm. And you have to have the same effort all the time. And a couple of those times, I think the effort was there. You just, some of those were going for three or four yards, you miss two or three tackles yeah. and it's a 12 yard game. Yeah, and I, I think you hit it perfect too. I, I didn't even look at it that way till you were saying it, but we had 21 missed tackles, and I think it was really just three plays that we had seven missed tackles on that play. Right. You're like, oh, he's got him. Oh, no, he's still got him for a loss. Okay, now he's gained five yards. We got him. And, uh, um, huh. right. yeah, it, it, yeah, you, you hit that one dead on the head. I mean, it was the same play. It, it should have been a sack or you know, a tackle for loss, and then it should have been a tackle for just a two yard gain. And then he ends up gaining nine yards. Yeah. And those were the ones that just, it, it just hurts you. And, uh, but, you know, and dang, you know, that it's, and it's the, that's the, that's defeating when mm-hmm. like, ah, we had a four tackle for a loss. Then we had a tackle for two yard gain. And he ends up by the time we tackle him, it's a seven, eight yard, nine yard gain. And it was probably on third down or either, <laughs> or either it was second and long. And now it's third and short. And we know exactly what they're coming back with. But you know, we we it's easy to sit here and talk about, but being on the field and they're like, now you got to get up again yep, and yep. go make a play, and after you just and that kind of wears on you, especially when you're it's you know eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock in the middle of September in Arkansas, mm-hmm. you know. So, well, and you said it too that that's very mentally defeating when you're going through that and again, no moral victories, but you take things that you can build on. And not too long ago, we had a staff and team that in those situations, that game Saturday would have been an absolute blowout. Oh yeah. Uh, Yeah. We, we talked about it earlier in the week Uh, that, that doesn't, and my mother-in-law even said that today at lunch. She goes, this been in you know two years ago, and that we lost by four touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Easy, easy. And so, and that's why I say too, like for the fortieth time, no moral victories. But you see the program building. We're, 
I did say that we were going to go 12 and 0 national champs. I mean, that to me as a fan, I'm putting that in every game. That's my job as a fan to show up. We're winning this ball game. I'm going to scream my head off. I'm not going to be able to talk for at least two days. Uh, th- that's what I do as a fan. That's my job uh, is to be loud, scream at the TV, even if I'm watching it there, because they can hear me. That's that gives them motivation, but it, you see these guys are finally, and I don't, I don't want to say finally, but uh, they're turning that corner of, okay, we can't sit here and mope. We can't take this. We've got a chance. We've got the talent. We can come back. I mean, they were down 21 to three. Correct. Yeah. We, we would have crumbled a few years ago. Instead, we fought it back. It was what, 21 to 16 when Spencer threw that went to AB that, it was there. He just missed it. He'll tell you before anybody else that that he should have had that throw. But it's a hard one. He's running straight, so he's got to compensate that. That's a, that's a really hard throw to make. It. Yeah, running side to side, you're able, you know you're still you still got the same distance when you're running straight and try to hit it. You know now you got depth perspective that that's a little harder. But uh, we had a chance make that play. We take the lead in a game that we should have been getting throttled in. Uh, But that's what I say. I I take the positive out out of it. I don't live in a negative world. So that's just kind of how I see it. And, but to kind of, to wrap it all together, to to complete the full team kind of face palm a little bit, you know, the saying one week you're the windshield, the next year the bug, uh, I don't know that you could find a saying that is more explanatory for special teams. I mean, you have two punt punt blocks for touchdowns and then we can't even get a snap for an extra point. We're fair catching the ball on the 10 yard line when there is nobody around. Uh, we're, We're shanking punts. We have two onside kicks that we kick straight to the guy. Um, I mean, I get that it's supposed to kick up, but it did not. And it went straight to him. So you you go from one of the, oh, it and again the week before, two block punts for field goals and then or for touchdowns and then two fifty plus yard field goals. So you go from one of and a seventy nine yard punt, I think yeah, Kyle had. Yeah, yeah. So you go from one of the greatest special teams games you could have to arguably one of the worst it it just it it was a collective uh just a collective loss saturday yeah i mean you you have team wins that was a team loss (laughs) you know uh, it's it's one of those things that's i I think i tweeted this you i said you know some of you people need to learn the 24-hour rule oh yeah And, and that's what it is you know you by Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, when they're watching their practice and they're watching film, it's done. You know, yep. you gotta you gotta move on. And um would you like to have that one? Like we talked about the the plays here and there, absolutely. But you know, learn don't make the don't make that mistake twice. Don't you know? Don't you know? When you throw a knuckleball, it's supposed to knuckle. If it doesn't, it's probably gonna get Ooh. hit. About 50, <laughs> you know, just it's just like a BP throw, pitch at that. When point. you do right, when you do onside kick. If it don't move, it's bad things are going to happen. Yeah. And bad things happened. And, and, and that wasn't the only play, but, you know, it was well, it was one of the most glaring because it was at the end of the game. And, <laughs> you know, I could have ran that for – well, I wouldn't say I could have ran that for a touchdown. <laughs> I would have I would have gotten caught. But um, yeah. I, I could have ran that for at least a three-yard gain. I'm just oh, yeah, gonna... yeah. I could at least got it back to the, uh, to the kicker next. Or something. <laughs> Maybe. I'd have probably tripped. I'd have been. I definitely would have been gassed. I would have, had to come out the next play. I, I would have just fell on the ball. Like yeah. I ain't running. Uh. Uh-uh. Um. Oh, but to, to your twenty-four hour rule, it's. I'm as competitive as it gets. My wife will tell you, like when we play board games, I don't let her win because I want to win. Winning's fun. Why would I lose intentionally? That doesn't make sense. Um. So. When Carolina would lose, it would just wreck me. Like, I would be furious and all this. And I used to work with a guy. It would be Friday before the next game. 
And he'd come up, I can't believe they did. And I remember I looked at him one day and I went, it's not that serious. Yeah, it is. And I was like, no, it's really not. Like I, I still had to come to work. I still had to put in my work. I still had to you know, pay bills, whether they won or not. I would have had to do that anyway. So what they did did not alter my life. Correct. And, uh, and then kind of as the years have gone, like, again, like I said a while ago, my job is when there's time on the clock, when there's innings on the board, I'm in it 100%. Like, I'm sweating. I'm screaming. I, I mean, I might as well be playing. But at the end of the day, my happiness doesn't revolve on, on whether they win or not. And, and that's why I don't get one of these people just you know, bash people or talk crap. And when they win – I'm right there with them. When they lose, I'm right there with them. That that's what being a gamecock is. Yeah, and I think you know it kind of goes back to um, last year. Forgot what new, what press conference it was when the whole "Find Some Joy" came out. Mm-hmm. And I think about it a lot because my dad used to be the same way. You know, when I was in high school, we lost on Friday night, and Carolina lost on Saturday, and he was on night shift. It may be a week before he spoke to me. And I'm like, my mom would always say, it's not that big of a deal. Yes, it is that big of a deal. But as he's gotten older, it hadn't been that big of a deal. But, and I was kind now, of now if I'm playing, it's that big. Like, if yeah. I'm playing, I look, uh, it, it's, it's that big of a deal. But as but, a fan, know, as you said, find some joy. Right. And, you know, happiness to me is, is kind, of, kind of fleeting because was, for four quarters, I was not happy all the whole time mm-hmm. you know there was some happiness and there was some great sadness and but the fact of the joy that Carolina football you know for me and my wife and you know most of our families it's like you still want to, those guys you still pull for in a culture that is changing yeah. and coming about I don't know of anyone else who wants this job more than Shane Beamer yeah, and, and that actually brings me to another one. As we were talking about the no bashing thing earlier, it is an embarrassment that anybody would question Shane Beamer as our head coach right now. Oh, the way we are recruiting, again, was Saturday ugly? Absolutely. But the direction and the positive, positivity he has for this program right now, you are an embarrassment to this fan base if you question him as the head coach at this point, I'm not saying he's going to win a national championship next year or, or what the future holds or whatever, but you cannot tell me that there is another human on God's green earth that would be putting in the effort as he is right now as the head coach of South Carolina. Well, yeah. And, and a lot, and a lot of folks give him, give him crap about the staff, you know, I don't know who they expected him to bring, but there's some really good football coaches on that staff. Yeah. And they're extremely knowledgeable about the game of football. And sometimes you just got better dudes on the other sideline. Yeah. For, for, for a time, you know, and like I said, their recruiting is unbelievable, but sometimes it just is what it is for the time. And, but you obviously got to get better, but you know, that, well, I think right now our I think our roster right now, I, I said it in the preview episode and everything. I truly believe we have the talent to compete with everybody on our schedule. You know, again, now that we got some injuries going into this week, it's going to be a little tougher. Uh, but we saw Saturday. We came back. We still made it close. I truly believe we have the talent to compete with everybody. It's once you get into the depth and not just yes. – not just depth as far as do we have good guys, but experience depth. Yes. So, I mean, I, I fully believe we, you know, the Stone Blantons of the world are going to be elite players for us. Uh, and I'm not saying that he's not doing well yet right now. Stone's my boy. Um, but I think he's only going to get better with experience. And everybody will tell you that you're going to get better as you grow, as you get bigger and everything. Um, so I, I, I think we have the talent to compete with everybody. It's, it's just a matter of do we have the depth that when our 
second comes in or if somebody gets banged up and we're having to go a little bit deeper, do we have the drop off or can they still come in and, and kick people in the teeth? Well, and, and speaking of him, um, he's probably going to get some snaps this week. Um, you know, with, yeah, with yeah some, I think so. With, with, some, with, some, with some linebacker depth, he's probably going to get some um, trial by fire against the ball. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think he'll get a little bit more PT. So, speaking of, you just made the transition. So, this week, Georgia, uh, initial thoughts. I, I know you, you've got a lot of people, especially with injuries. Oh, we're going to get murdered and blah, blah. And I've said it a thousand times already. That's not me. Uh, I think we go out. Uh, I think we're going to compete. I think this team learned something about itself Saturday that they can kind of play a bad game. I mean, Arkansas is not going to be a six and 16 this year. They're going to be one of the top two, top three in the West. And uh, so I think this team found out that they can maybe not play the best, but still compete, still have a chance to win. And that's only going to do great things for them. So I think it's going to be a tough game to win, obviously, again, with the, uh, injuries and everything obviously george is good um but i i expect our guys to respond well really yeah they're i think you're right they they've learned something about them as a as a player i think individually and i think they also learn themselves as a team team wise um They've been in the fire, so they they know they've had to fight a little. Adver- they fought adversity the first for you know week one, and fought some adversity week two, and you know there's going to be some adversity week three against the reigning national champions. You know they just don't hand screw that. that. We're going to roll them. Yeah, I mean, you know it's just uh, you just don't hand that trophy out for the best record. You know there's <laughs> a reason why they get that really big trophy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to take it. It's going to take some effort beyond just a little bit, you know, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be tough. Um, especially with, with the injuries there, but that's why everybody goes to practice too. Mm-hmm. And everybody gets reps, you know, um, if Boogie can't go, then MJ Webb is the next guy. Yeah. MJ well, Webb gets reps, you know, he's, he's going to go. And then well, the saying too is, is that that's why they played the game. Exactly. I mean, on paper, oh, Georgia should win. They're number one team in the nation. Yeah. Well, you know what? They got to come to williams Price Stadium at noon in September. And they got to play the same amount of time that South Carolina does. And they're going to have to make more plays than we do. Yes. And they're the ones that are have the target, you know. As a Carolina fan, you know, we can go out and just let it go, you know, just yep. and be loose with it, mm-hmm. you know. When no one expects anything of you, yep. then you can go play loose and you can just go after it. You know, um, that doesn't mean you can do dumb stuff. But so, what do we need to win? Obviously, somehow, some way, you got to find a rhythm of something. Um, you got to find a way to move the ball and push it up the field. Whether it's the run game, you know, and I'm a big fan of. I don't care if you run the ball ten times a game and throw it a hundred but find something that will move the ball and put you in position to score points. And you have to be able to do that. And I'm a big fan of the run game. I feel like you have to run the football first to open up the passing game. Some people don't always believe in that, but it is what it is. Um, I like our screen game with, Mm -hmm. especially with with McDowell and Lloyd. I like the screen game with those guys. Um, Getting the ball to Jaheim Bell is going to be, Important and and Stogner for that matter. Um, defensively, we had to get out. We got to get off the field on third downs. Um, yeah, I think that's been been a problem. Was, you know, a problem Saturday. You have to get off the ball on third downs. If we talked about uh, the missed tackles. We gonna have to get eleven people to the ball and be in a really bad mood when they get there, and really team tackle and get make sure that no one else is assuming that the tackle is being made until the whistle blows. Mm-hmm. Um, special teams wise, you got to have a Georgia state game and not a, <laughs> yeah. Um, or, or at least just not Arkansas. 
It just, yeah, it just don't have another Arkansas. Just don't have an Arkansas. So it, it's actually funny. So I have my own notes, and you started all offense. I started defense on mine, but you literally said about the same exact thing that I had. <clears throat> so my number one uh, for what we need in this game is got to tackle better. Better. Um, I mean, that's a no brainer. But yeah. you, you again said it perfectly. If you miss one, the next guy has to make the tackle. Um, it, it, it's not one thing of, of if you miss a tackle or two, but you can't have them stack up on you. And and I'm totally piggybacking on what you said earlier because you said it perfectly. I mean, on the plays that we missed one, we missed like four. So uh, you can't have those plays. So if one guy misses, next guy has to be there ready and you know, make those plays. Third downs, crucial. Uh, I, I feel like we've lost so many third downs by inches already so that that's again difference in a ball game but uh mine on offense i, I feel like we <clears throat> i feel like each game so far we've only really had like one standout wide receiver now wells had a great game and um uh brooks was there and and, and made some catches and stuff saturday but then it drastically fell fell off minus the screen game uh I want to see us, and maybe we've been holding it. If we held it Saturday, then that is kind of dumb. But I want to see Bell in the passing game before we worry about putting him in the wishbone and running it up the gut. Like, he's too big of a guy. He's too athletic. Get him in the open field. Let him make a catch and only have two or three guys that are much smaller than him trying to make a tackle versus – putting him in the backfield and having 11 guys looking right at him. Let him get out there. Throw him some screens. Throw him the uh, slant route that we finally ran. That was so glorious to finally see that we called a slant play ever. Uh, and it went for huge yards, and we never called it again. Uh, but get him out in the open to where he can make plays and do things. And really, if we want to tie this to some recruiting – we are going to have a very large recruit in this Saturday. He's a five-star guy. He is a track star guy. He isn't one of the top athletes in the nation that's going to be watching this game. What is one way that can help win him to come to South Carolina? You say, hey, we see you as the next this guy. Now watch what we do with him. Right. Uh, so, So to me – and, and like we say with special teams, just don't have an Arkansas game. Go out, make the field goals that you got, snap it straight to the holder, kick it, make it. Um, hopefully we're not in situations where we need to do onside kicks. But, uh, yeah, just don't have an Arkansas game. Does Georgia have a weakness? From, from what I've seen, I, I think their defense has taken a step back from last year. That's not hard to say. I mean – that defense last year was nasty with Davis up front. So yeah. obviously it naturally would take a bit of a step back. Um, uh, three, three of the four or two of the four front guys drafted in the first round. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it no, it's no. obviously going to take, take a step back, but like we were saying a while ago too, is they're taking a step back because the guys that are now filling the positions just don't have as much experience and you don't know their names as much yet, but right. they're definitely not making massive step offs in talent. So they're still good. They're just not like a power 100 defense. You know, if you're, if you're making them on PlayStation, but they're like a 95 now. Yeah. Uh, you're right. I think that's, um, yeah. If you, if you, I guess if you got to find a weakness that. <laughs> I mean, I, I got to have something to talk about to carry yeah, some yeah, time yeah. in a podcast. Yeah. Like, does George have a weakness? Yeah, yeah. sure. Their defense yeah. isn't great. They don't, have, they don't have near as many first rounders on the defense. <laughs> the they, they've only got second rounders now. Yeah. So, but again, you know, like, like I said, you line up to play the game for a reason. Mm -hmm. and, you know, who would have who thought uh, three years ago, however long it was? At, at Georgia, when you kick a field goal to win in overtime, yeah, you know, who would have thought? But um, 
different group of people on both sides of the ball now. But, <laughs> well, uh, actually, some of the people are just well, on yeah, the other side. Yeah, they just kind of change polos. But, um, you know, you always want to – and my biggest thing is just just compete. Mm-hmm. Uh, go out there and just compete your butt off. And when the fourth quarter rolls around, just hopefully you're in a spot that, you you know, you've got – a little bit of momentum on your side to um, to see if you can't go sneak out a win against the reigning national champions. Yeah, and and of course I had score predictions here. I'm not even going to do that unless you have a number you want to throw out for the hell of it. But I'll be honest with you, I, I'm, I'm horrible at um, score predictions. Um, well, and, and you just said my thoughts too. This is what I say with every game, especially in a game that quote unquote you're the underdog. Go out and compete. Yeah. Go out and compete. Everybody thinks we're going to get blown out. So you go out and compete in the fourth quarter. Give yourself a chance to win and then see where the chips fall. You put pressure on them. You make them make the plays. You make your own plays. You don't have to go spectacular. You make your plays. Put the pressure on them. See if they still have the snuff. Go from there. Uh, that's it. I mean, I mean, as a fan, that that, that should be our demeanor demeanor right now is if there's a quote-unquote better team that we are facing go out compete give yourself a chance to win if you do that you're gonna you're gonna win a lot more if you put pressure on the other guys uh, you're gonna win a lot more than you're gonna lose because they'll work that's that's it you know control what you can control do your in do your job that's uh and then I go back to um, one of the highlight clips that I was watching earlier on the Gamecock Plus. Demo says, do your job. Hold on, for the record, we are not sponsored by Gamecock Plus, but if y'all would like to, uh, if y'all want to sponsor us, that'd be perfectly great. Okay, continue. Big fan over here. (laughs) Um, I I am going to have to check it out. We've got a, we're in the Gamecock Club, so we're going to have to check it out. And it's free. Um, Demo says, do your job about 10 times Mm -hmm. and that's if you do your job and the guy beside you does his job typically good things happen yep and well you know what we just said just compete try to be in it in the fourth quarter and just go see if you can win one yeah i'm uh anxiously excited for saturday i like i said earlier i I think we're going to come out i I think they're going to come out and play hard. Um, They learned a lot about themselves Saturday. They found out they can play bad, still win. So now if they come out and play good, now where can they go? Uh, So I I think we're going to come out and go great. Um, Out of habit, I I always like to say Mr. in the last name. So it would probably be a little funny, given your wife, if I said Mr. Hopkins. Uh, (laughs) But, Jeffrey, appreciate you being on again. I think you are actually the first ever two-time returning guest. There we go. I I think you are. So, again, appreciate it. Setting the bar high. Oh, yeah. This was a go with it. This was more in the weeds with X's and O versus when that punk like Stavi and and, and Chuck and all them come on and – they make me go all AWOL and we get off track. See, it's all their fault, not mine. See, I can follow the lead. and uh, But I, I, I'm anxious Saturday to see what happens. Appreciate you joining on. We're going to wrap it up like we always do. You just called his name out with the demo. So go Gamecocks. <laughs>